Hey everyone, welcome to another 3D printed part review from Ampro Engineering. Today we're going to talk about this kind of stripped down, got no, no tires and some dust, Tamiya MO2. To those of you who had seen the MO3 uh, part review that I had done, I mentioned specifically that I didn't have another mini chassis. I forgot. I actually do have this MO2. It's a project car for a future ambitious project that I'll be undertaking, but in the meantime, it's kind of what's left of a car. I did run this for quite a while with a Mazda RX-7 body, which is just awesome looking. So you get your little mini lights here. And when I got the car, I was uh, missing a few parts. This front, uh, this uh, little, this pivot arm was missing. These retainers for the battery were missing and the antenna mount was missing. So as you can tell, I went ahead and printed them. Now, I, I try not to just print stuff because I've got nothing else better to do because I've got a lot of things better to do. Uh, it might be hard to believe, but you know, you can trust me on this one here. And when I was looking for this replacement piece, I couldn't find it. There were no trees available on eBay. Um, I didn't really look too closely on some of the forums where you can post want ads and all that. Um, it was just not available. So I I, I'm saying, I said it was missing. I almost want to say it wasn't maybe, a, I think a chunk of it was broken. There's something damaged to it because clearly I was able to model it. For this piece here, um, I had the one. So I went ahead and just kind of took that and modified it and made this piece here. Antenna mount is equally as straightforward. You can see here that it does conform to the factory geometry. And I think a number of Tamiya cars have this exact same geometry for the body mounts. So as you can see here, if you are missing this, uh, I'm no expert on the mini size chassis, but if this is a, a antenna mount that does cross between platforms, you know, it's, it's gonna work for you. And the beauty of this is as you, you know, anybody who's got one of these cars, you know that the sprue comes with 20 other parts that you don't need. So even buying this, a couple of these, and this separately, in most cases, is gonna be significantly less than the cost of the sprue. I did wanna just do kind of a close up here so you can see the actual functionality of this piece. Now, according to the manual, this is the B6 part. I have beefed it up a little bit. The original, uh, this arm was quite a bit thinner here, so I did kind of fatten it. It's not the most beautiful geometry in the world, but it got the job done. So um, most of the geometry on this has been thickened just to make it a little more rigid. This is a quite a bit large. In fact, on, on the one I, I gotta find it. You know, I, you know, I'm gonna look for it real quick. I really should have done that in real time because I found this in about three and a half seconds. I can't find my car keys every morning, and yet I was able to find a piece I hadn't used in four years. Oh well. You can see that it, I, I did glue this back together. I don't know if it was cracked and it was breaking, but obviously the front part of it here was missing. Um, and I did have enough of the geometry over here. You can kind of see if I compare the two, you know, what I've done to reinforce it a little bit. This is a direct replacement. There's zero modification required. Let's take a look at it from the top. Okay, so there we have it. And so you can see some of the changes I have made to it. Otherwise, the important geometry, how it actually mates to everything, it's exactly the same. So if you are missing the B6 piece on a MO2, I, I, I don't know if it's the same for an MO1, but it's certainly for the MO2, you can see that this is going to be a direct zero modification replacement. Well, there is the C2 part. So, this, as you can tell, is, as I mentioned earlier, this part right here. Um, if you can kind of see the difference here, you can notice that on the original part, and, I, and I, I do have the original available, it's just that I did take some of these areas over here where there's plastic and I just hollowed them out. Uh, in fact, I put rounds on certain things, and the reason for this is the less material that is printed, um, the cheaper it is. So that's why I am able to offer this one here at a bit of a lower cost than the other. These parts you can see are red, uh, as opposed to the steering arm, which is black. They, they are available in a number of different colors. And again, you do have this upgraded one or you do have the stock one as well. And these are going to be direct fits. The bottom, let me pull this off right here. So if I did want to actually plug the door like on the other side, I would just take that and 
put it on there and you know problem solved. Now you've got your retainer. So just like the Tamiya version, this one here is able to be used as both the removable door and the solid retainer. Last, but currently least, is the B9 antenna mount. As you can see here, you know, not much really to tell you. You can see that it's supposed to bolt onto the rear body mount. And as you were very able to notice on my original version, if we weren't so blurry. There we go. The original version is the exact same deal. I did make this one a little bit taller because I figured it wasn't gonna hurt to have a little more height here so that the antenna is a little stiffer in this. This is a tapered tube here so that as you press the antenna in, it does snug up. You can see the hole at the bottom there for the antenna wire to pass through and all the proper geometry here to prevent this from flopping around. And again, this is also a direct replacement. Those of you out here who uh, do own an MO2 or if, if there's any uh, parts that do cross over to the MO1, I hope you enjoyed the video. To those of you who don't own an MO2 or an MO1 and think the chassis is a piece of sh Sorry, sorry. I know I'm not supposed to say that. I like the MO2. I know a lot of people don't like it. The lay down shock is actually what I'm going to use for another project. So that's kind of why I focused on that. But I did mention that there's upcoming projects. So without further ado, here is a few of the upcoming things that we're going to be going over. This is my Tamiya Grasshopper 2. You're probably thinking to yourself, that is not a Grasshopper 2, and you would be correct. I've done some, uh, some paint work on this, and the video that I want to talk about with this car is how to do the stripes. So I've got a video where I basically peel off all the masking tape, which allowed me to create the... Because all, all, all these stripes that you see here, this is all, all paint all paint. So I'm going to go over how I did that because I do get a lot of questions on how on earth did you do it. It's it's really easy. Uh, all you need is some patience and straight lines. Really, it's, it's pretty simple. There's also this wing that I created here, which we can talk about as well. So this is coming up pretty soon. Let's see, what else do I have on the floor? Ah, here we go. I know what you're thinking. What the heck is that? And all I can say to that is I have no idea. It's, I don't know what this is. It's a mess. It Hornet SRB something. This is going to be my Super Champ clone. I've always wanted a Super Champ. So it turns out in my mind, if you do, oops, if you do this, There you go. If you do that, you have a super champ. As you can tell, it's gonna take a little bit, a little bit more than that to make this work. So as you can tell, this is a major project that I'm, I'm using all this geometry at the rear here, which is kind of this Frankenstein weird looking shell on a standard Hornet transmission that kind of locks the whole tranny in place and does have these out drives, a la SRB, driving SRB-ish suspension arms as a validation project for another upcoming project. This is, uh, this is upcoming, upcoming quite a ways for this guy here. So this is Superfly. I have purposely not really gone over this car and I've had a lot of emails with people asking me what the heck this is. Uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a long story. It's, that's just it. It's, I could take me three weeks to explain how the heck this happened. Nevertheless, you can tell that I do have double wishbone front suspension on this car. Okay, we have exterior cantilevered shocks because cantilevers are cool. We've got our cantilevered center shock, which is... This is basically a prototype you're looking at here. Well, focusing at the rear, this is Superfly version 2.0. 3.0 is coming out soon and notice how we have a solid rear axle here like a hornet does well as you can tell by by this car here 
Version 3.0 is not going to have a solid rear axle, nor is it going to have a swing arm rear axle. It's going to be a little more involved than that. Um, but that's basically what I'm building this car for. It's a, it's a test rig to validate that the design on this car, which will be much more uh, intensive, is going to be operational. So why stop here when you can do stupid things and stop way, way, honestly, you know what I should just do is just go to a hobby shop and buy a new car. Hmm. It's not a bad idea. Eh, it's too late now. Final couple of projects. Here we have Project Hornet 2. You're probably thinking that this is a Super Hornet, and you would be right. It is, in fact, a Super Hornet, but to those of you who have seen this before, on the Tamiya USA website, there is a mistake under Super Hornet. A prototype Super Hornet, or it's always been known as, as the Hornet 2, is shown there with a completely different shell that bears a resemblance to this, but is not this shell. And there's a few, a few things that the prototype had that this doesn't. The prototype had these vent slats, which the Super Hornet does not have. So I printed those out of a little panel and grafted them in here. The later car or the prototype car also has rear louvers. So I have this little louver panel that will go right there. Okay, so this car is underway. And what is a Hornet 2 without a Hornet 3? To those of you who recognize this car, this is a Rising Fighter. The Rising Fighter, much like the Super Hornet, has a body that is reminiscent of the Hornet 2 body or the prototype car on Tamiya's website. Well, this front half of the body is exactly the same as a Super Hornet. So I did the same thing here. I added those hood vents. We've got the same geometry back here for the louvers. Um, but this project went a little bit more in depth as I never liked the Rising Fighter's rims. So I took a set of Wild One front wheels made some corresponding wild well this again i did change these a bit the wild one has small holes in the back wheel this has large ones because i think it just looks better i also added a rear support uh, like the super hornet that gives the rising fighter a in my opinion a a much nicer profile it doesn't stick with its butt up in the air like the factory version did and it kind of gives it a little more of a reserved look so this is Project Hornet 3. So this has got a lot of work done. You can see I did also add, uh, to those of you who know the Rising Fighter, I did add these little bits here as well. Well, I think I've uh, gone over enough spoilers. The Rising Fighter is going to have its own video because again, there's going to have a lot of, uh, there's going to be a lot of upgrades for this car in general. So that's enough of this one here. I hope I was able to salvage some of the video here. Uh, for those of you who don't really care for the MO2 did get to see some other things that you're interested in. Um, and uh, I, I hope you I hope you uh, you subscribe and look forward to some of these upcoming videos. Please like this as well. I'm told that that's a good thing. I don't know how YouTube works. I'm not 14. I have no idea how these things work anymore. Please add me on Instagram. And oh, hit Pupcat, Pupcat fell over right there. I mean, just there we go. Please add me on Instagram as well as Facebook. I'm Ampro Engineering on both. There's also a link at the end of this video to my Shapeway store where all of the parts that I've talked about are available. In fact, some of these parts here are actually there as well. Please take a moment to check out the band Blue Pinto. Their link is also at the end of this video. They provide all the songs that we use for this. I, uh, I think they're awesome. I hope you do as well. And I will see everybody next time.